this is day 68. Um, I'm really talking about interpersonal communication today, but I phrased it building our digital competitors. Now, it, so I had a couple thoughts flowing around in my head about this. Um, I was starting to think about what would be the most important skill for me to develop. Like if I were to really work on a particular skill, what would be the most important skill to do? Um, so I had lots of things I thought through, but th I kept coming back to interpersonal communications, like the ability to communicate and intera interact with other humans. Yesterday I was on a call and I hit it off really well with a, with another person that I've never met before, clear across the country. And I talked to this person simply because I reached out to them and we had a great conversation about a variety of topics uh, in business and a few other things. And I thought, that's interesting. That interpersonal communication is so highly valuable to me, more so than any other interaction. That, that really made my day. So I was thinking, you know, are we, are we losing that at all? You know, at the same time, I'm reading a couple of novels, you know, when I run or when I out and about doing shopping, I'll, I'll listen to an audible book. And I usually download books that I think are going to be relatively non-thinking, like don't they don't require complexity of thought to process. <laughs> so I'm, you know, so I started reading the uh, um, Frank Herbert's son uh, found some old notebooks from his father, you know, the author of the Dune series, and he he started um he wrote the three like prequel books that happened 10,000 years or so before Dune happened. And so I started reading those and they've, they've been a delight because I've learned a little bit more about what Frank Herbert was thinking when he wrote the book Dune, which was great for me. But there's one quote that I heard this morning as I was running. And that was humans were foolish to build their own competitors, but they couldn't help themselves. Uh, and this was a quote attributed to Erasmus, which is one of the evil villain robots in the in the books. Um, so that kind of got me thinking, as we develop all these AI tools, and I'm in the thick of this too, just like anybody else. So I'm thinking, uh, as we start developing these AI tools, I mean, yesterday I was messing around with an AI bot that speaks French, and I was having a conversation with it. It was teaching me French by having a conversation. And I thought, somebody wrote this bot and somebody created this persona. And I thought, that's really interesting. Um, is this a threat to interpersonal communications or is this an improvement of it? So I dusted off some old research that I had from my um, communications degree I took years ago. And I remember this one author, Charles Cooley, wrote this book about, you know, the looking glass self. It's this idea that our interpersonal communications is completely dictated by our perceptions of what we think those people view us as. So my parents may view me as the angel. Uh, my uh, ex-girlfriend might view me as an evil devil. My my current girlfriend might view me as the strong and great person and and then my friends might may view me as a weak, you know, pathetic person. Yeah, you know, well whatever it is, you have this view of the way you think they view you and as a consequence it changes your interpersonal communication with them. It's especially true when you're dealing with children and parents, right? So children will create this persona with their parents. And the parents will have one view of their kid, but the kid has developed this completely other view of the way their parents perceive them. And they're constantly trying to build that up or maybe tear that down. So it's, it's really imagining how we appear to other people, imagining how others judge our appearance, and imagining how others feel about us based on judgments we think they're making. So that in Charles Cooley's estimation was the looking glass effect of the impact on interpersonal communication. So then I started thinking as we start to create 
personas or bots to handle things. I mean, I could very well see a future where my I might have a consumer bot, the guy as the consumer bot. And basically, all the advertisers, they can just go ahead and interact with the guy consumer bot. They don't need to interact with me personally and suck my time up. Rather, they can interact with my bot. And if they get through my bot's objections or my bot's concerns, or they have a product that my bot thinks I would be interested in, then my bot can curate to me the advertisers that effectively work through the guy algorithm. Um, so I can see this world where our social media networks are really becoming avatars or instances of ourselves communicating one with another, and we might not even know it. I mean, why not have my Facebook bot do all my Facebook work? And I thought that, but then, then I thought, well, that, that's destroying the interpersonal nature of it. Like I started, you know, thinking about LinkedIn and Twitter and, you know, I mean, X and, and Facebook and all these tools. And I thought, Part of the reason why these are so successful is because the intense desire for us to connect with people. But I've also noticed that they're very much an intense desire for us to connect with people the way they imagine that we are, which is the looking glass effect that Cooley talked about. That's really fascinating. And then I got to thinking, well, maybe this would improve interpersonal communication. Um and and then finally, I remember there's this uh, researcher in the 60s, uh, Sidney Girard, I think was his name. He created this thing called self-disclosure theory. The idea is that if you wanted to have healthy relationships, foster a sense of openness, and have enthusiasm for a relationship with other another, you had to be transparent and open and be willing to self-disclose to that person. And by so doing, you would have built a better interpersonal relationship. So if that theory is true, I wonder if that applies to our social media presence. Like maybe the people that will be more successful on a global scale or on a community scale with uh, social outreach will be the people that are more transparent and more open rather than the people that are hiding behind an artificial persona. Interesting. I think that uh, still interpersonal communications is a highly valuable skill. In the sea of AI, I bet you that the value of interpersonal connection is going to exponentially increase. Um, I I, I just feel like that's the case. So wake up call for me to focus on my interpersonal skills. I cannot hide here in my cave and talk to myself <laughs> or or right away or do the things that I do behind my uh, camera and behind my mic or behind my social media or behind my conference call like Zoom or Teams or whatever. So I can't hide here. It's probably better for me to get out and interact. So as Christmas holidays come up, I've got a lot of family hanging around. Maybe it's time for me to open up a little bit, be more transparent self-disclose. With that, I will say adieu. Bye.